All right, our final topic is operational security. So we will talk about firewalls and intrusion detection systems. Actually, they, it also includes intrusion prevention system. So in the detection you detect, in the prevention you actually take an action and prevent something. All right, so let's start with firewalls. So a firewall isolates organizations' internal network from larger internet, allowing some packets to pass, blocking others. So you have the firewall, and there are some rules here. Depending on the rules, it allows or blocks packets. So uh, why do we use firewall? There are many reasons. We can prevent denial of service attacks, like SIM flooding. Attacker establishes many bogus TCP connections. No resources left for real connections. This is basic denial of service attack. We can also prevent illegal modification access of internal data. For example, attacker replace CIA's phone page with something else. Allow only authorized access to inside network, set of authenticated users or host. There are three types of firewalls, stateless packet filters, stateful packet filters, and application gateways. Okay, so let's start with stateless packet filtering. So this actually, decide uh, the following, should arriving packet be allowed in or departing packet let out, okay? Internal network connected to internet via router firewall, filters packet by packet, decision to forward drop packet based on source IP, destination IP address, TCP, UDP source destination port numbers, ICMP message type, TCP SYN and ACPIS. So uh, here's an example, for instance, you want to block incoming and outgoing data grant with IP protocol field equivalent to 17 and with either source or destination port is 23. Result, all incoming outgoing UDP flows and telnet connections are blocked. Right? Second example, block inbound TCP segments with ECK equals to zero. This prevents external clients from making TCP connections with internal clients. So, because they cannot initiate from outside, but from inside you can initiate this because this way it won't be inbound but outbound TCP. So this allows internal clients to connect to outside. So here are some policies and here are the corresponding firewalls, firewall settings. So in the status packet fielding, for instance, if you want no outside web access, you drop all outgoing packets to any IP address with port equal to eight. No incoming TCP connections, except those for institutions public web server only. Drop all incoming TCP SIM packets to any IP except this IP with this port, okay? Prevent web radios from eating up the available bandwidth. Drop all inbound UDB packets except DNS and router broadcast. Prevent your network from being used for a smurf denial of service attack. Drop all ICMP packets going to a broadcast address, for example, this. Prevent your uh, network from being trace routed. Drop all outgoing ICMP TTL expired traffic. So this way you can actually, you know, prevent a lot of attacks by these settings. So here are some settings. So you have access control list in your firewall, okay? This, this is a table of rules. Apply the top to bottom to incoming packets, action conditions pairs, look like open flow forwarding. So here the idea, this is important, this sentence saying that apply top to bottom. So for instance, here you write deny everything. So if you put this to top row, this means that you are uh, disconnected from the world. But instead you put this to bottom and actually write the exceptions above this rule. So for instance, you allow uh, source address this, destination address this, protocol TCP, source port larger than 1023, destination port 80. So this actually allows you to connect to web pages from inside, right? So this way you can allow any rules. For instance, the, the aim generally is to close every port, but when somebody wants to use an uh, application and that application requires a specific port, Actually, you open that port for that IP address so that only that person uses this IP uh, that port and so on. So stateless packet filter, heavy handed tool, admins packets that make no sense. For example, destination port 80, act with set, even though no TCP connection established, right? So for this reason, 
you might prefer stateful packet filter, which tracks status of every TCP connection. Okay. Track connection setup sin, tear down fin, determine whether incoming outgoing packets make sense. Timeout inactivity connections at firewall no longer admit packets. Okay. So here there is an another uh, column here, which actually says check connection or not. So now this table ACL augmented to indicate need to check connection state table before admitting packets. Okay. Application gateways are more powerful. This filter packets on application data as well as on IP, TCP, UDP fields. So here you have the router filter here. So your firewall like here, but then put the application gateway here. Okay. Example, allow select internal users to telnet outside like this. Okay. Require all telnet users to telnet through gateway. So everybody first connects to application gateway, then goes to outside to internet. For authorized users, gateway sets up telnet connection to destination host. Gateway relays data between two connections. Router filter blocks all telnet connections not originating from gateway. So you are actually uh, blocking every telnet request from these devices, but you allow application gateway to telnet. That is the idea. So this computer goes to application gateway to use telnet. Limitations of firewalls and gateways, IP spoofing. Router can't know if data really comes from claimed source. If multiple apps need special treatment, each has own application gateway. Client software must know how to contact gateway. For example, must set IP address of proxy in web, web browser. Filters often use all or nothing policy for UDP. Trade-off degree of communication with outside world level of security. Many highly protected sites still suffer from attacks. So for this reason, Next to a firewall, you also need something called intrusion detection system. So this is packet filtering operating on TCP IP headers only and no correlation check among sessions in packet filtering. But if you move on to intrusion detection system, you can have deep packet inspection, of course, if it is not encrypted, right? For the encrypted data, you may still look at maybe the destination or source IP addresses and ports. But uh, if it is not encrypted, then you can even perform the packet inspection by looking at the contents. For example, check character strings in packets against database of known virus attack strings and so on. You can also examine correlation among multiple packets like port scanning, network mapping, denial of service attack. This is important because in the port scanning, actually scanning a port is not an attack itself, right? So your firewall may allow it, but you're actually scanning every port and this is a port scanning attack, and then you can detect it with intrusion detection system. And if you take an action against this, so if you detect something and then maybe uh, block the source IP, this turns intrusion detection into intrusion prevention system. So you might say that, of course, then why we use IDS? Let's turn everything into IPS, prevent everything, but there will be many false alarms. This is why. IPS is sometimes uh, painful in practice. So there's no need to use only single IDS. You can have multiple IDS around, different types of checking at different locations, like here, you know, internal network, here your demilitary zone and so on. So again, if you turn IDS into IPS, if the security is really important, you can, you know, tolerate false alarms and prevent every intrusion. But uh, in practice, it is hard to do it. And we, generally, we try to use rules, then use machine learning and combine them, and then you know, uh, trigger alarms if it is really serious. So let's finish this lecture and this course by the summary. We mentioned basic techniques, cryptography, message integrity, and point authentication. And they are used in many different security scenarios like secure email, secure transport layers, IPsec or 4G or 5G or Wi-Fi security. And finally, we talk about operational security, firewalls and IDS.